Kia ora, you're listening to Katu Maya, a podcast series for those who want to create a better future. Featuring real stories from some of South Auckland's most innovative community change makers. Listen in as they share the highs and lows, the passion and the persistence, the mighty wins and the epic fails. It's a real and raw cordial that will leave you inspired and equipped to take the next step in your purpose driven journey. Katu Maya, be brave. Ma loy lele whanau, welcome back to um, the final episode of this amazing kōrero that we've been having around the um, community innovation that's been taking place here in South Auckland. Today in our final episode we're going to talk about the topic titiro ki tua, looking beyond, um, looking into the future and what it's like to be a leader in the whole realm of community innovation. I have two amazing guests here, we've got Return of Amber, Taylor hey. from Ara Journeys, kia ora hoa. Kia ora. And we've also got the amazing Ray from Game Tan joining us today. Kia, uh, hey. kia ora, bro. Yeah, hey, kia ora. It's good to yeah. have you here, man. We're going to have an awesome kōrero today. Um, so we're going to kick right into it and get you both to just introduce yourself, um, who you are, what you love, and uh, what your organisation is in the mahi that you guys do. So we'll start with you, eh, Ray? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, kia ora, everyone. My name is Ray, and I'm the owner and founder of Game Tan, which is an education company. But we love to use video games as a way to draw in interest into technology. Um, we focus on technology and we want, um, technology is the future, so we want to uh, plant seeds into our young tamariki um, on uh, interest in technology so that they can you know, pursue those as career pathways in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a little bit about you, Ray? Where were you born and raised? Oh, I was born and raised in Mangare, two seven five all day. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was <coughs> born and raised in Mangare, around Viscount area. If you guys know the area, and I uh, went to Viscount School, and I went to I skipped Mangare College actually, and I went to Unihanga. Yeah. Uh, Unihunga, is, uh, <laughs> and then I ended up. Um, yeah. I don't want to share anymore because I failed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah. get into that a little yeah, bit yeah, later. Yeah. But Shabra, it's awesome to have you here. Um, oh, sure. Awesome to just have you as part of our community. you love the mahi that you're doing. Um, over to you, Amber. Oh, kia ora koutou katoa. Um, my name is Amber. I am the CEO and co-founder of a digital tech company called Ara Journeys. Um, we're on a mission to flood the world with Indigenous stories using immersive technology and the latest tech, um, emerging technologies coming out. Oh, it's awesome to have you back with us again, Amber, for the second round. Um, love the mahi that you're doing. And I think it's the perfect combination having you two here as we talk about about the future. And so I thought before we get into a bunch of other stuff around what it takes to to lead innovation in this kind of, into the new realm, I guess, I thought it would be good for us to just a little chat about, have a little chat about, I guess, some of the trends that you guys are seeing across the tech sector and how that will impact on some of our our young people and how you're kind of integrating that into the into the mahi that you're doing. So, yeah, what's the future looking like from your perspective? Who wants to go first? <laughs> um, future is really exciting for us at this stage. Um, we're really working on cutting-edge technologies, so... A uh, big part of my mahi and the, jo- and the job that I do within Ara is looking at um, our international tran- trends in the technology space and one of those being the metaverse, mm. which everyone um, has probably already heard of. But if you haven't heard of it, it's basically a digital universe. Um, everything is created in a digital realm mm. and it incorporates multiple technologies. Um, so you're talking about gaming, your AR, VR, mixed realities. Um, NFTs are in there, crypto and blockchain, looking at uh, artificial intelligence, um, a whole bunch of stuff really, mm. and it's all incorporated now um, and be given, been given the name, the metaverse. Yeah, yeah. What kind of stuff can you do in the metaverse? All sorts. Yeah. <laughs> From yeah. us being in the gaming space, um, we're looking at how the metaverse is now influencing gaming, um, especially from a geolocation game perspective, so mobile games, how mm. we can incorporate what we do and build it into that realm to stay current, um, not only for growth within the company, but to also bring our rangatahi through on that journey with us. So they're learning and adapting at the same time that we're growing and building. Yeah, yeah, I mean. What have you been noticing about the metaverse, Ray? Right? Yeah, so the metaverse is mean because to me it reminds me of that movie. Have you seen Ready Player One? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's similar to that. That's the way I kind of see it. It's like a, just a universe of like a digital universe. Mm. Yeah, um, for me it's it's 
you know, I think it's, it's definitely going to be the big future, you mm. know, metaverse. Um, and I feel like, you know, Facebook is leading right now, but then later on you're going to have companies like Google, you know, big, massive ones trying to get in on it somehow mm. as well. Maybe they'll start their own sort of platform similar. Um, but, yeah, for me the most exciting part would be, like, the gaming, the interacting side. That's probably, like, real all uh, interesting to me you know just being able to like meet up <coughs> me. meet up with your mates and stuff on the metaverse you know when you're using the oculus oculus quest and mm. i've done that recently as well like oh, i brought oculus quest to a couple maybe last year um and during lockdown i was just like put it on meeting up with mates online it's just it's just pretty weird you invite them to your room and yeah you just yeah yeah play games together and stuff but yeah that's probably the most exciting part but yeah there's also the big you know things that you can do in terms of making money um, that Amber probably knows a lot more about than I do. But yeah. yeah, what kind of platforms do you jump in on when you <coughs> when you chuck your Oculus on? Yeah, so um, we, um, when I use the Oculus, you go into like the Oculus sort of home page, mm. but it's also part of the metaverse, and um, and you can create your own room and people can come into it, and then yeah, it's just uh, you just basically hang out like this, and then you're like, oh, what game you guys want to play, and then you just select the game you want to play, and you jump right in, and then you start playing together or whatever it is. Um, Does it yeah. feel real? Uh, at this stage, not 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 so real. Yeah, because yeah, it's it's not like uh, Ready Player One. Mm. Where it's just like you can feel the damage and stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's basically just playing VR, but you can see each other, you can interact, and the movement's not there yet. You know, um, they do have like new VR technology where you can put on gloves and you can put on like the st- leg straps and stuff and the movement is the way more realistic. Yeah. yeah. But in terms of like the facial expressions and stuff, it's not there yet. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So I'm uh, not like Ready Player One, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. coming. It's coming though. It is coming. Yeah, it is coming, yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's crazy. It's what crazy. are some of the things that you're excited about with this whole space, Amber? Uh, excite... I think the biggest thing that I'm excited about is the opportunity to actually look globally or connect globally like mm. it'll be a lot easier you don't have to jump on a plane like covid shut down yeah. travel across borders so for us um, as a company looking to go international mm. this is a great opportunity for us to actually reach out and mm. start building networks so that when borders op- are open and we do decide to travel again we've already formed those relationships we're already like establishing what our space and within the metaverse is going to look like mm. Um, the same with education, you know, opening education up and getting international educators to be able to teach children back here in New Zealand. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, these are experts. In a really immersive way too, eh? Yeah, mm. if you think about, <coughs> like, all the professors in that at Harvard and Stanford and all those big university, and even the UK, their university professors having access to them. Yeah, I wonder which, which university is going to crack it first into the metaverse, yeah. eh? Oh, there's a and few, be a there's real a few building now. Yeah, I bet a real truly global... Like university, doesn't matter where you're located. But how cool is that for yeah. like a kid from South Auckland going, oh yeah, I'm going to take this course over there at, in the States at this university because mm. they're cutting edge and sensors mm. or haptics or whatever you want to get into. Yeah, me. Machine learning. And you can get through it through ho- at home. You know, just yeah. on your you don't even have to leave home. Yeah, don't even yeah. have to leave home. That's why it's awesome. It's I, the the other movie yeah. it reminds me of is, is Wally. When everyone just sits <laughs> there <laughs> and they're just real fat and they just got their That's like what I think yeah. of. That <laughs> is exactly and everything that they do is yeah. just in this other universe and then in reality, yeah, I mean, I suppose then you'll just, it'll be like the movies, eh? and then you just got to pump in the nutrients, keep your body alive so that your immerse, your immersion stays alive. Crazy. This is why we build the games <laughs> we build so people aren't sitting there yeah, <laughs> stuck uh, behind screens. Yeah, like, we yeah. want you out in the environment. That's where our Get health and wellness there, is. Yeah. 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 This is the uh, very reason we do what we do. I hope it's not like that, eh? Just imagine just sitting there just like all day on, on the... Yeah, yeah, in the metaverse. Yeah. That's why I like the Ready Player One better because yeah, they're moving around and stuff. And yeah, yeah, that's it, eh? That's it hard out. And so I've seen, like, and just my observations of what's going on there, there's lots of big brands that are jumping in and building their digital universe, um, yeah. joining together. You can buy property. You can um, get NFTs. There's all that sort of stuff. There's a blockchain that's enabling all of that stuff to happen and then crypto and stuff like that. But what are, I guess, is there opportunity from your perspective for the metaverse to have positive impact globally to to help some of the big challenges that we're facing with people, with the planet, stuff like that? Yeah, definitely from our perspective, like 
all the trends that we follow and look at for everything that's great about the metaverse, there's some downsides to that as well. And one of them would be health, um, mm. as you've already touched on. So for us, it's like, how do we take this concept of the metaverse and build our community within there that still stays true to the values for other journeys and what we're trying to achieve. So looking at how do we help the environment? How do we um, do more around climate change and education and climate change? How do we enable our Indigenous peoples right across the world to be able to access these kinds of technologies and this universe and the community that we're trying to build so that they're protecting their culture, they're preserving their languages, mm. they've, um, they've got their Indigenous knowledge in there, but it stays in that universe for future generations coming through. So for us, it's looking at how do we use the metaverse in that way yeah, um, yeah. to still stay true to what we want to achieve as a company. Yeah, I love that. I love that. All right, anything else you guys want to touch on around um, like what the future's looking like for our young people? Anything else outside of that? Mm. Metaverse is all the rage at the moment, eh? But yeah, that's huge right yeah. now. For me, like, yeah, for, you know, it's happening right now. You can see technology being used by young ones, you know, um, and it's, you know, the divide between the generations, you know, they see it being bad, but then the younger generations see it as being good because there's a lot of opportunities now. Mm. You know? It's not like, a, you know, you've got kids earning, you know, millions just being YouTube stars, you know, but yeah, is that yeah, a good yeah. thing? I don't know, yeah. it's up to you the way you see it. But mm. yeah, I, yeah, yeah, technology is just, it's it's the new way of, of life. I, I would say like old way of life, but yeah. just emerging now, yeah. especially in New Zealand with our... You know, Maori and Pacifica people and the people that we focus on is game turn. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's like it um it's like a lot of the middlemen are being cut out too, eh? Yeah. But in yeah. things like content and places like I mean I, I don't know too much about gaming, but I feel like it might be the same there. Um, music, all of that sort of stuff where you don't have to go through these big um what do, you, what do you call them, like record company labels yeah, and all that sort of stuff and, and pay them the royalties yeah. and that. There's so many more ways to connect with the world and mm. connect with each other and to share. Um, that Even with crypto, I think that's essentially what that does is, is takes it away from the banks mm. um, and you get you get full ownership of what is actually yours. And so I feel like that's a big big shift that's happening and potentially even fast forwarded a bit with, co- with COVID um, into us really believing that, that we're connected globally. Um, and this, it's so much easier than we think. Yeah, that's my little ramblings, anyway. But we'll we'll move on into <laughs> um, we'll move on to into a few cool cool topics that we've got organised um, for this quarter. Also, I think when you um, we might start about like talk about leadership first, I reckon, mm. and what it's like for you guys to be leading an organisation that is kind of on the edge of technology or on the edge of education. Or on the edge of career development, what is it? What is it like for you as a leader, and what are, I guess maybe some of the challenges that, that you've come up against? We'll go a few, Ray. All right. Um, so, yeah, leading in innovation for communities. Uh, I never saw myself as a leader. I was just, it was just more, you know, we need to do this for this particular outcome, and so, and the way that we did it was just so different, you know. Mm. Um, so. The, the concept that we use is um, having fun while learning um, at the same time. So, like, you know, um, a lot of my mates were into cars. They're into racing cars. Mm. You know, they, they still are. And, um, you know, they didn't really know much about cars. But then because um, they got into racing cars and they started um, playing with, you know, exhausts and started um, upgrading their cars, you know, they start, they became more mechanics. And then that's how they got into, like, the car industry. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and so that's the same thing that we went with, you know, like, you have fun with video games with technology and so um we try to show um, all the people that come to our programs the possibilities of um, getting into the tech industry through doing what they love Mm. like creating their own games creating their own apps um just things like that and the same concept we used so yeah um and so because it was the way that we did it was um, a bit different because we play video games. There mm. was a whole stigma behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that video games are bad, uh, technology is bad, TikTok, you know, YouTube, all that yeah. sort of stuff. Um, so for us, uh, we, we didn't have a book like, you know, if you want to start a marketing company, you just watch YouTube videos. If you want to start like, a, uh, you know, any sort of company, you can watch YouTube because uh, many of them are existing. But mm. our one, um, it, it does exist. Um to a, to a limit but everything else is just different all the content everything's just so different um and so uh yeah it was very very hard but then um 
<coughs> you know, just don't give up. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. What was so it like working with parents on that stuff? Yeah, so the parents was really hard because, uh, you know, the kids, they really loved our program. So they would, you know, they would walk to our program and, yeah. and the parents would just not drop them off or the parents would be like, oh, yeah, we'll drop you off. It, it was more like it turned into like a babysitting service. Yeah, and yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, we'll drop them off because they can play games. And that's what they thought it was. So then we had to change our approach and be like, um, okay, parents, you guys need to stay for the first you know, 10 to 15 minutes because we want to do a presentation to show you about technology and how, yeah, um, nice. you know, that's the way of the future for our kids to, you know, get prosperous jobs, you know, prosperous lifestyle. Um, and so, yeah, and that's the approach we took. And then parents would sit there and they'd be like, oh, okay, what is this? And then by the end of it, it was just like, wow, you know, like this is amazing. And then they, they pushed our programming even further because they started sharing it with their friends and then more then those people started attending. Yeah, yeah, And so, yeah. yeah, but it was hard working with the parents at first, yeah, mm. definitely. Yeah, I bet. I bet. What do you reckon, like, um, like you were saying something before about how you, like, you just, like, when you don't know, you don't have the book, there's mm. no model that's been before, you've just got to figure it out. Um, like, how many times did you get it wrong? Oh, I got it wrong <laughs> heaps of times. Yeah, major, we, 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 had major losses like um because people didn't see any value in it because it was so new we didn't get paid for like two years of working mm. um with game 10 yeah no one understood what it was about they yeah. just thought oh game 10 must be gaming maybe it was my fault for calling it game 10 <laughs> maybe i should have called it something else but um yeah but yeah it was yeah it was definitely um hard to yeah to get anywhere um but yeah you just learn in from your mistakes you, you have to learn quick eh? yeah 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 because yeah. yeah. if you don't learn quick enough you know you're gonna end up yep that's it Go yeah. On. yeah learn and then have the like courage to change eh? exactly to pivot, um do something differently like what you like what you said i love the name that you came up with game tan i remember wondering what the heck it was about but then when you described it essentially getting the tan yeah, yeah, gaming, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was my mate. My mate, um, <laughs> his name is Wok. We went to we love going to the beach, eh? Yeah. And then uh, we, we went to his house. We were like, oh, bro, get off the gates, man. Come, let's go to the beach. Let's go get a suntan. Look at you. He goes, oh, nah, bro, I'm working on my game tan. <laughs> and that was like five oh. years ago. And then uh, ever since then, I was like, oh, I'll call it game tan. Yeah yeah, 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 So that's how we came up with the name. That's such a cool yeah. name. <laughs> Shout out to that's Wok. Awesome. <laughs> Shout Wok. That's a great get name. Get that game tan. <laughs> yeah. What about you, um, Amber? What's leadership for innovation like for you? I'm really lucky. I have an amazing team. Mm. Um, and they really make my job so easy in terms of um, in terms of leading our team and leading company direction. Mm. So for me, it's really about providing um, the tools and the company culture and the environment for my team so that they can innovate and so that they can be their true creative selves mm. within their roles awesome. so that they can grow um, and develop as the company grows and develops. So, yeah, yeah it's really about actually providing them with that space um, and the resources they need to be able to do what they do best. Yeah. What do you find the most challenging? Um, from a leadership perspective, personally sometimes I find, um, actually I don't know. Yeah. It's all well, easy for you, eh? No, it, it's in that leadership, like, I'm not about telling my team how to do their job. Like, that's why I hired them, right? Yeah, It's because yeah. they know what they're doing. Yeah. So it really is providing um, that resource and company culture. Because we run so lean, mm. um, I look for people to fill gaps that are currently missing within the company. So yeah, yeah. not everyone in our company is able to do everything, but they have a specific role within the company that is theirs. Mm. Mm. And that's the one thing I'm intent on keeping as part of our culture. It's like, that's your role, you own it. Mm. If you can think, if there's a suggestion made, if it's by myself or Isaac or Ben, who are the, the management team within within Utter Journeys, if we're wrong, tell mm. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the kind of culture that we're an environment we've created for people to work in. So when you talk about innovation, it's like everyone is free to have ideas and we'll all discuss it. We have this thing that we do at our team meetings and it's like, wouldn't it be cool if? Mm. And everyone just builds off that. Um, someone will go first, drop down an idea and then we'll all just like build off whatever that idea is. Yeah, cool. And whether or not we 
build it now or we park it and look at that later in like future track um really depends on what it is but for me it's like creating those opportunities for the team to be able to do that Mm. that's awesome i'm sitting there going i might steal that idea (laughs) (laughs) but um Oh, I had a really awesome question for you. Oh, now actually, I've got no, a little I do bit have of a mind. challenge. Oh, yeah. Our challenge um, is probably being able to innovate fast enough mm. because we are lean. Yeah. Um, so having to ensure that um, our team doesn't burn out mm. because we're trying to work so fast and keep. keep and it's up an today. expensive industry too, right? Oh, so expensive. Yeah. And that, but yeah, ensuring that that well, that's the challenge. Mm. Is like, how do my staff don't burn out? operating lean um how do we continue to innovate um within such a small team but still be at the front of whatever we're doing yeah um, yeah making yeah. sure that our r&d our research is being done into new emerging technologies mm. and then how do we incorporate it and build from scratch yeah i mean and what's it like being a um wahine maori leading in tech yeah that has its Take challenges a deep breath, girl. <laughs> Here it is, here it is, here's the good stuff. Um, for, I think, for the first year, two years, um, when I started Ara, it was probably the most challenging because mm. we were coming out new. Um, people kind of knew me from my role within the university, my previous role, but actually couldn't take me out of that role and into the company mm. and so whenever we were at different functions or different things happening a lot of the talk especially if it was from other males would go straight to Isaac mm. but this is where I've been really lucky in the space my team Isaac everyone's really supportive um, we're all supportive of each other so Isaac has always been really clear to go back to people and go actually you need to talk to Amber about that mm. so he kind of like made that that experience a little bit easier. Yeah, nice. Where I've heard other horror stories where women just get like spoken way over the top of Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But their business partners don't don't do the same for them. Mm. Whereas my team are quite quick to like actually you need to contact Amber to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's mean. And is it is there good like reception for within the wider community for Wahine Māori working in this space? It's definitely um, improved mm. and I think there's because there's a lot more of us visible now um, because I think they've always been there it's just now bringing it to the forefront and then actually being the face of their businesses mm. it's making it a lot easier for other um, wahine Māori to come through and actually present themselves in that leadership space mm. and have that accepted yeah, by wider awesome. community yeah because there's so many awesome wahine out there doing it, eh? Oh, so and many. And putting their foot down and, like, just standing up for standing up for us as a as a people as a whole. How about you, Ray? Do you have any challenges as a as a young male from South Auckland, Pacific um, Island man, trying to make some waves there? Uh, heaps, heaps. No. Um, can't, nothing comes to mind other than uh, the work itself uh, mm. being a challenge. Hmm. I can't really think of anything right nah, now. Nah, too easy for you, <laughs> eh? <laughs> I, I, too w- easy. I wish it was. <laughs> <but> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's awesome. One, but if I do come up with one, I'll, you know. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. Like a major one, yeah. For sure. So I guess my ne- next question to you guys will be like, how do you um, how do you define success for your organisation? How do you know um, what it looks like when you've, you've um, done what you've set out to do? I know we've talked through this series a lot about people having a dream or having a vision for the impact that they want to make, um, but we haven't yet talked about when you get to that point that you've actually achieved what you set out to achieve. So how do you guys personally and for your organisation actually define what success looks like for you and, and the people that you're reaching out to? Just thinking of it now, um, you know, we haven't reached our goals um we have reached some major milestones but for now um the way that we see success through game 10 is being able to plant seeds in our tamariki to show them that you know technology is awesome it's a way of life you can make a good prosperous living from it and actually seeing them pursue those in the future Mm. and and seeing them reach their goals, you know, in, in yeah. their career pathways. That's the biggest one for us. And also for us to be able to um, provide that pastoral care and 
you know, um, enabling them to be themselves, to be uh, Maori Pacific or whatever it is that they are, and um, still be prosperous, you know, mm. and just and just thrive in in the technology space, you know, being able to share their ideas and being looked after at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mean. So that's probably the biggest one for us right now. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys don't measure your success by how much money you make or uh no that no. is that is a nice bonus though yeah. yeah yeah not gonna lie yeah um but yeah we we do measure our success you, you know using numbers you know so that we can reflect on how we're performing things like that mm. um but yeah money is definitely the bonus there yeah, yeah, yeah to help us to provide even better impact and also provide for my family as well at the same yeah, time yeah 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 yeah, it is important, eh? Hey? But I, I mean, one thing that I notice with nearly everyone that's in the space is it's, it's actually not the key driver, and it's not the key. It's not the key reason for why we do what we do, um, and so it's not a super important indicator of what success looks like. Mm. It's like you said, it's a bonus, yeah, and it's yeah. still something you want to achieve. But it's all about the impact, right? Yeah, I, I, I reckon for me personally, if you have, um goals that are you know noble and 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 you put it in a way where it kind of reaches and impacts people uh money will come mm. you know the money will follow um that's just the way i see it yeah, yeah. that's awesome bro how about you amber success for other journeys is kind of twofold and it's similar to what ray's already touched on around creating um those opportunities within the technology sector for rangatahi uh, for our maori and pacifica um, future generations coming through, um, showing them the, the good things that can be done with technology um, and how you can actually use it to help people, help the environment, um, help your elders and help your community as a whole. Mm. Um, so that's a real big part of what I we do that. and why we work the way that we work, um, the company culture and why we're, we're, quite, um, we're quite protective over who we associate with ourselves with or the other brand with yeah um, in terms of other organizations and then the other the other in the technology space well we want to be the world's biggest um storytelling platform create mm. a space yes. for hey. all indigenous cultures to be able to preserve their languages and their stories for future generations because you know once we start losing that we start losing our culture mm. um, across the world so we want to create that platform um, to be used worldwide. Yeah, I love that. And it's so important, eh? <coughs> excuse me, I know for me when I um, was first starting out, uh, as in like leaving my employment and going self-employed and starting out in this and building my own social enterprises, um, I had a meeting with someone, just like someone that I looked to as a little bit of a mentor, someone that was a bit further down the track anyway. Um, and she asked me this question that was like, you know, why, why are you doing this? Why are you going out on your own um, and what does success look like to you and she really drilled me to like come up with an answer as to what it was like what success would look like to me and I think as I've gone on it's really cool because I can continue to look back at what success looked like for me back at the start and measure what I'm doing and where I'm going against that um, and I think I say that to people all the time like knowing what like if you say when I help with homelessness you still need to know what does help with homelessness mean to you Mm. Does it mean that you just want to help? You want to help the people in your street, and once you've helped the people in your street, then then that's cool. That's success for you. That's that's totally legit. Or do you want to be um, helping everyone in Auckland, and, and you want to solve homelessness in Auckland, or do you want to help all of New Zealand, or what is actually what does this success look like to you? So that as you're building it, um, it helps you helps you make decisions. It helps you. Um, when distractions come along or opportunities come along that might distract you from your, your goal or your vision, it helps you know when to say yes and when to say no. Um, and then also when you know that you've achieved what you've set out to achieve. Because if you don't do that, you could go in a totally wrong direction and end up having a lifestyle that you don't even want, mm. um, doing things that you, you never really set out to do. So defining success in your innovation journey is super important. Um, and it might change um, as time goes by. You might achieve one thing and then re-establish what that looks like. Um, but it's a really important marker, eh, for, for what it is that you want to do. There are three things that I think are really important when uh, we think about defining and measuring success for you individually. Uh, and I bring it down to kind of three steps. The first one is understand, second one is to reflect, and the third one is to measure 
first one, when we talk about understand, this is understanding you, understanding your values, understanding what's important to you, uh, understanding what does success look like. And the way that I uh, think about that is if I was to describe to someone that I have been successful in a certain period of time, so let's call it a year, in a year's time, if I was to say I've been successful, what will I have achieved? So think about what it is that's important to you. Uh, what are those core values that, that drive you, that motivate you, that get you up in the morning and make sure that success is aligned to that. The next part is to reflect. Uh, if you can be a constant learner, if you can constantly re reflect on exercises, on experiences that you have, on things that you might read, on things that you, or people that you might interact with, uh, if you can constantly reflect and learn and adapt and apply what you are experiencing, then I think that plays a huge part in you being successful. A really simple model that I use is what, so what, now what? And it's just taking a look at what it is that you've been through, whether it's a, a, an experience that you've just had uh, or a situation that you've faced in your life. What is talking about the facts? What was that experience like? What was involved in that uh, particular circumstance? The so what is kind of the insight. So when you say what, so what? What is the insight? What did you gather from that? What was unspoken in that experience? And then the now what is what are you going to do about the what that you've learned and the so what that you've just thought about, what are you going to do moving forward? What is the action that you're going to take? So if we can co constantly reflect on the experiences, then it's going to help you towards being successful. And the last part is measure. Now, measuring success, I like to think of measuring success as don't just measure the end point, don't just measure the end goal of what you might have achieved or what you might have accomplished, but think about measuring your progress and measuring the momentum that you've uh, managed to, to gain over a certain period of time. So uh, meaning we can get caught up in thinking that we need to have achieved something. So if I've set a goal that is kind of six months away, uh, I, could, I could probably look at myself and think I'm not successful until I've achieved that. But you just need to look at today and think, am I better than where I was yesterday? Am I better than where I was the week before? As opposed to thinking, have I accomplished this achievement? And am I only successful when I've accomplished that achievement? Or am I successful because I'm better than where I was? previously so another thing on the journey um uh, especially when it comes to leadership is the art of perseverance and getting through um i guess longevity and tenacity and being able to stick it out through um all the ups and the downs um from your guys experience what do you think are some of the keys or even examples um of perseverance for you guys go to you this time amber I think perseverance always comes back to your why. Mm. Like, why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. Um, what is the goal that you're trying to achieve? Like, I'm very goal orientated. Mm. So every year I have this board and it's in, actually in my bedroom. Um, and it's got the five key goals I want to hit every year. And then I break it down to these mini steps. Mm. So that kind of keeps me focused on the long game, on where I'm heading, um, yeah, what yeah. direction I want to take throughout the year. But to follow up on that why, I think the other thing that's really, for me, around perseverance is knowing your boundaries um, because otherwise you end up working yourself to death mm. and your why can be as strong as you want it to be, but if your health is failing you, you you're not going to achieve those goals. Mm. So it's like putting your boundaries in place, being able to say no um, when opportunities come up that actually don't serve your why or your company's values or mm -hmm. missions. Exactly, it's like yeah. being able to go, actually, no that that doesn't align with us so sorry I can't help you yeah and I think just keeping that mental clear space actually really helps you in the long the long game mm -hmm. because it is a long game yeah <laughs> like hard out technology is forever moving we've got yeah. it we're innovating constantly it's never ending eh? It, it's a never ending kind of moving feast for us yeah so yeah. you have to I think be really strong and okay this is what I want to achieve I know this is what I need to do to get here mm. And these are the limitations I need to put around my time to make sure that I can do that. How do you personally, like, overcome those moments where you just feel like, oh, I've had enough? I go, to, I work out. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so I um, run the company <laughs> nice. remote. Yeah. Um, so all our team work from home. And for me, my gym is at home as well. Mm. But I'm really lucky that I can actually separate home from work. So my office is not um, part of the house. Yep. Um, so when I'm in the office, that's my focus is work, mm. um, not the house chores, not yeah, the kids, yeah, like yeah. that's my workspace. 
and then I break my day by finishing with a gym workout mm. and that kind of clears me mentally for home. Yeah. And then it comes back to those boundaries, right? I'm like, okay, yeah, nice. these, are, these are my hours through the day. This is what I've dedicated to work. Mm. This is my time at the gym. It helps me like clear my head, reset, and mm. then it's like my family time. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. How do you, Ray, how do you get through those moments where you just want to throw it all in? Um, like Amber said, you know, it goes back to my why. Mm. I, just, I think about, like, the reason why I'm doing this. And that has helped me persevere, helped me, like, get back on the horse and keep mm. riding, you know. And it's helped me understand what is more important in life, you know. Like, what are you willing to sacrifice? What things are you willing to... You know what, what, what it's going to cost you to keep moving forward, mm. and um, yeah, like Amber said, like I didn't put those boundaries in the beginning because I was so desperate. You know, like yeah, yeah, two yeah. years working. Anybody want to talk to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two years working, not knowing what to do. You know, and then just trying to like figure out how this is going to work. So that whole time, like I was in a stress phase of my life. So mm. um, I'm real happy now, though. But like before then, I was just like so stressed out and then i gained heaps of weight so mm. you guys saw that phase because i was coming here and i was like massive and but i wasn't like that before this is like my normal size now and then um yeah once i kind of figured it out you know you learn you learn heaps you learn heaps and then yeah and then i kind of and then i finally set my boundaries you know like oh i had to say no to people mm. before i was saying yes to everyone because yeah, yeah. i was trying to figure out what i was trying to do I was saying, yes, oh, can you come over here and do this? Even though like it didn't really align, but it was yeah. just to get our name out there. So I was saying yes all the time. And, you know, that affected my health, staying like one hour sleeps, you know, sometimes no sleep. Yeah, um, yeah. But then now I'm in a better place. I've learned a lot more from those experiences. And then, yeah, and now I'm back to being myself again and just working out as well. Yeah, working out every day. So Yeah, yeah, yeah you come in there with the big gun show, <laughs> eh? <laughs> 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 Crackle. <laughs> I wish you know. <laughs> Hard out, eh? What's, um, tell us a little bit, you were telling us a little story before of like an example of perseverance for you on this journey. Um... An example of perseverance. I forgot that story I shared. I was like, oh, you were just talking about when you were on the doll. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that was a massive one, eh? That was a mess. That was probably the that was the biggest one. Like, um, so then I had to figure out how I'm gonna get money in my pocket. But um, yes, and so my family was shouting me a lot. You know, like, oh, we're gonna get family dinner. You know, the first month it was okay. Then the second month is like, you need to get a job, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. my family was like. Oh, you need to get a job. Just get something part time. But I always knew, like, if I were to get a part time job, that might, that might break my dreams. You know, that might break mm. my vision. Because then I'll end up being like content. Okay, I'm just gonna work a nine to five job now. I'm getting like consistent money. You know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I thought to myself, nah, if, if I got to do this, I got to go all in. You know, yeah. that's what Gary V and all the other play uh, people players. I was gonna say players. <laughs> players. <laughs> all the other hustlers. people do. Yeah, all the hustlers. Um, they say you got to go all in or else it's, it's, you know, you're not putting your, your concentration, you know, your whole bandwidth on your head into mm. what you're doing. Yeah. And so um, I kept saying no and then my family would be like, you know, telling me off and stuff like that. Even my, like it got really emotional. Eh? That's why I was Aww. so stressed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they would say things like, a big one that my sister told me, she said, it's not like you're my older brother anymore. You know? Oh, wow. Because I had a good job before that, before I, before I left. Yeah, I just yeah, did those. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna quit. Jump into this. <laughs> <laughs> Earned nothing for two years, so it was a little bit silly. I mean, if you think about it now, it's like the most silliest decision. But um, it's those decisions that make you, you know, put a fire behind you. You know, yeah, and make you yeah. run. Yeah, make you run faster, and that's Hard what happened to me. And then, uh, yeah, and then, um, so I, c so I'll go to, I'll go to sleep crying at night but i always think why am i doing this why mm. am i doing this um it's also to help my family but also to help our people mm. um and that's what i always thought about at night and that's what kept me going that's what kept me going and i said right now my family like <clears throat> giving me the hardest time you know i'm crying when i get to sleep but i know one day it's going to be better mm. and then um, nick minute paying the bills you know and then yeah. my family's happy and stuff like that and Yes, yeah, so got all this yeah. new gear. Yeah, 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 so got a skin on the van, and it was awesome because we had a mean like support group, like you know, especially from yourself, Manawa, and the Ngahere communities team definitely helped heaps, mm. like with that connection through Joel and 
um, yeah, just having that mean support to help you even go further. You can't do it by yourself, you know. Yeah, yeah. So people I say it a lot, but um, yeah, when you have people like helping you get move forward, you know, it just makes it yeah that much easier for yeah. you. Yeah. So cool, man. What a buzzy story, eh? We're going <laughs> to talk a little bit more about your guys, your individual pathways as well. Um, but I was just going to say, like, with perseverance, sometimes it's like, like, you never really get what you need on the first crack, eh? You've no. got to you've got to keep going. You've got to keep trying. And sometimes it can be like, sometimes you might just be more, one more funding application away from getting the money that you need, you know, or mm. one more ask for someone to back you to finally yeah. get someone to back you, or one more try... One more post on your Instagram reels till you get one that goes viral. Like you, you just you've just got to keep going, and it's quite often your breakthrough is just it's just right there. It's right there in front of you. If if you give up now, you're never really gonna know. Um, and I think everyone that you talk to that has some level of success, whether it's an entrepreneurship or innovation or even gaming, like they you have they had to persevere through everything else. It doesn't just happen overnight at all. Yeah. If it does, then stuff you no. <laughs> 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 yeah perseverance is key eh? but i guess just before we wrap up um one of the things that we wanted to talk about um in this court at all was about the fact that not everyone takes the same not everyone has the same journey to get to the destination that they're going towards um we all have our own pathway that we take and it's dictated by our upbringing by the environments we find ourselves in by the skills and talents our personality traits that we have whether we have access to money or not, there's lots of different things that can, um, I guess, contribute to our journey and our pathway towards towards success or in life anyway. Um, I'm keen to hear a little bit, like extract a little bit from you guys about what your journey and pathway has been like in getting to where you are now. I know both of you were school dropouts. Um, so already you didn't take the traditional route of what's deemed as success um, these days. So yeah, what I will start with you, Amber. Just share a little bit about what your journey's been like getting to where you are today. My journey's been a zigzag roundabout, <laughs> um, <laughs> <See>. upside, <laughs> down. Us. upside down. That's <laughs> us. Um, curveball. Mm. Uh, yeah, didn't do anything um, that people would consider traditional ways into tech. Yeah, uh, dropped out of school halfway through fifth form. I uh, had my first child at 18, went to university as an adult, um, actually enrolled in computer sciences and programming, and actually, I hated it. Mm. I got halfway through the semester and I was like, yeah, this is not for me, I need something more creative. Um, so I dropped out of that program, had a little bit of a break, fluffing around with the kid, mm. um, and then went back again and funnily enough did business. <laughs> um, and did my degree in business, but I majored in marketing and information sciences. But the funny thing with that is I took so long to finish that degree um, and I got towards, I think I was two and a half years in um, to my business degree and decided that that was the wrong degree for me. I should have been doing something else. <laughs> 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 but I had got so far down the yeah, track. Yeah. Like I only had, I think, one semester or, no, two semesters left because it was a, a conjoint one. Two semesters left to finish it. I was like, okay, I just need to... You know, persevere, yeah, suck, it, suck up it up, eh? and finish it because I can't just keep dropping out all these degrees because I decide now that I've got a new interest. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, really roundabout story. I ended up working for the university, mm. um, which was really cool because that's when I really got into the tech space um, and learning about emerging technologies and commercialization and mm. how how our research fits into international markets. Mm. Um, and that's where I first learned about augmented and virtual realities, um, which kind of sparked my curiosity around how we can use that technology better um, and to use it for as, you know, a positive and at advantage for our people yeah. and for our culture. So, yeah, started um, Art of Journeys while I was working at the university. Yeah. So I was working in my company two years um, as well as working the full-time job. So I was the last one to actually draw a wage um, from, from Ada and actually come into the company full-time. Mm. Um, and I only did that. Last year, started twenty twenty one. Wow! Wow! I left the university and went into the company full time. Yeah, Yeah. awesome! What a buzzy journey, eh? How about you, Ray? Yeah, mine's the same, eh? Like I just, you know, growing up in Mangere, you know, you end up uh, on the streets a little bit, you end up over here, you end up over there. So (laughs) kind of just, 
Yeah, I did a lot of different jobs um, and just not knowing what I wanted to do, you know. And um, I thought to, you know, and then I ended up um, serving a mission. And then, uh, yeah, and then after that, I just kind of did whatever, studied whatever, failed, you know, <laughs> failed as well. And then um, and then I got to a point where I reached like probably around, I don't know, 26, 27. That's when I realized, okay, I, need, I really need to get my life in order. Yeah. And then I thought, um, I thought about my family, I thought about, I thought about my parents, like what they've gone through to, um, you know, help us put food on the table, or give us uniform, because I was still like thinking like a child back then. Yeah. And then I realized like how much love, you know, how much love they gave us as kids to raise us really poor in Mangare. Um, and then that's when I thought, okay, no, I think this is the time now where I really need to make a difference because mm. I realized, you know, um, I realized so late in life, but you know, at least I realized. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's the main thing. exactly. And then that's, <laughs> yeah, and then that's when I started setting goals. Like what Amber was talking about, setting goals. And then I started setting goals, and I was like, okay, so how how can I do this? How can I? Um, and then I tried different things, which all failed. And then you know, I love technology, I love gaming, and that's when I was like, I can do something with this because it's helped me, so mm. it'll help others. Um, and that's when uh, we started Game Ten and. That's how that's how it happened. But heaps happened along the way, like, you know, a lot happened. But um yeah, like I had a good talk with some mates about this on Sunday actually. Like not last Sunday but the Sunday before. And um so there was this young girl, probably around eighteen, nineteen, she was asking us questions and because we were all at different levels of our life, you know, me and my mates, mm. we were all giving different advice. Yeah. And then um and that's when I realized like, you know, our pathways were so different to get to where we are. And one person was just so adamant about it, eh? Like yeah, yeah. her pathway. She was like, Oh, you shouldn't get started, you're wasting your money, you're gonna end up this, this, that, this, that. And then and then um I told her like, you know, everyone's different you know yeah. so your pathway was different from mine you know obviously i i studied but i failed but that actually helped me learn mm. to be like okay so that helped me learn okay this is not where i want to be um so uh, this is where i want to be or mm. okay that's not where i want to be this is where i want to be like similar to what amber was sharing and then um and that was my pathway to get to where i am now yeah. and then i i ended up telling the girl that asked that question about um you know asking us advice i said to her look um, everyone's pathway is different. Mm. Um, if I were you, I would continue on what I'm doing now, um, study whatever it is you're studying. And, you know, it may not work out. It may work out. But if not, you know, you just cut your losses, you move forward because mm. that will help you get to where you want to be eventually. Mm. Um, and I was just talking about just expose yourself to heaps of stuff and then you'll finally get to see where you want to be. And Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, that's, that's it. Yeah. That's mean. <laughs> Get it, bro. <laughs> I was uh, I was going to wrap up with some of that stuff, but you got oh. it all sorted. <laughs> You're the man. But, yeah, I, th I think that's it, right? Like, you you find yourself where you find yourself in this journey in life. Yeah. And you just got to own it. And don't allow things like comparisons or stereotypes or the, the norm to, to hold you back. Yeah. Um, and we talked about this a bit more in, in episode two as well, I think. But but who you are, where you come from, your fun or your culture, all of that are such important parts of 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 you and your journey and you just got to own that you got to love that you got to love yourself and and know that it doesn't matter which way you come into where you are now it's a legit way there's no one set way um we've all got That's our right. own journey ahead of us and we'll have more journeys to come but um it's all legit so thank you both so much for your time today it was awesome to sit down and call it i felt like we could just keep chatting um about this sort of stuff but Big mahi to you both. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, um, oh, thank Amber. You. And thank you, thank Foundation you. North, for um, for backing these in oh. incredible initiatives yeah. here Thanks in Foundation South North. Auckland. Oh, right. um, let's go another round, eh? <laughs> 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 Come on, let's go. All right, thank you, guys. Ka kite. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Nga mihinui. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed that episode. Katu Maya was proudly brought to you by Foundation North. To enhance lives, Foundation North provides funding and support to initiatives large and small to respond to their communities now and for generations to come. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram or www.foundationnorth.org.nz.